course. Um, I worked at the UN in Geneva and I was supporting the UN Human Rights Council, um, which is the body you just talked about, world governments around the world come and talk about human rights issues. And it's just about the only body at which civil society representatives, human rights activists have the right to speak. And every session prior to the session, the Chinese government would ask the UN whether or not certain people were planning to come. And it is completely against the rules to hand over that information to any government. But the UN makes an exception for China and only for China. And it gives them the name. And China uses that information to go to harass these people's families that are still based in, in China. Sorry, sorry. Could you understand this correctly? Because I'm shocked. Yeah. The yeah. United Nations is handing over the names of genocided Uyghur dissidents, as in their communities yeah. being genocided. The United Nations is handing the names of these people, these activists and these victims to the government of China that is genociding them. Exactly. When people are planning to come to the Human Rights Council to challenge China about this genocide, instead of helping them, the UN passes their names to China. China uses that information to put pressure on their families, to have their family members call them to tell them not to come, to arrest their families, to detain them in the camps, to torture them. And I have been denouncing this since 2013. This has been going on for years. And, and, and Emma, forgive me because the listeners may find this slightly incredulous. How do you know this? You, you, you're, to clarify, you're an employee still of the UN. I am, yes. Um, I know this because my boss was the person doing it. I'm, I'm, he, I'm speechless. You, you I'm furious. Be, you should be furious. Some of the people on this list are UK citizens. Your boss, was handing was the, your boss at the UN was handing the names of Uyghur dissidents to the Chinese government. Now, exactly. now what's happened? You've blown the lid on this. What's happened to your boss? What's happened to you? What's been the fallout of you speaking about this? Uh, my boss has been promoted. Um, I have been deprived of all functions. Um, I have taken the UN to its internal court. Nobody can sue the UN for complicity in genocide because it has diplomatic immunity. The only court they can be sued in is their internal employment court. So I've taken them there and the UN has argued in court that it is unreasonable for me to think that human rights principles and even the principle of do no harm could ever trump the mere possibility of a better political relationship with China. And the UN has even declared that it has a right to lie about this. That the fact that it, when other member states, when I reported it to them and they went to the UN, the UN lied to them about it. They've said they have a right to lie. Now, now again, because I'm trying, I, this is just shocking to me, and I want to make sure we're not misunderstanding here. You know, as a UN human rights lawyer, that your boss was passing names of Uyghur dissidents to the Chinese government, and the UN, you're saying, when you complained, promoted your boss, sacked you, or didn't sack you, sorry, sidelined you, you're mm -hmm. now not at work, but still legally employed by them. Yeah. How do you know this? Have you seen your boss do it? Have you seen documents? Do you have proof? Yep. I because have these the are serious allegations. Yeah, I have the emails. I have the emails. I have four days of tapes of court hearings in which the UN defends it. I have all of the legal documents in which the UN says it's completely fine. I have the findings of successive ethics officers. The first two ethics officers said it's unreasonable to prioritise human rights over politics. The third ethics officer who gave his decision in January said that this policy was clearly something that I should have blown the whistle on. The policy was clearly wrong. Um, but again, he didn't even propose an investigation. And you've been and punished for raising the alarm. Yeah. And do you know, forgive me if you don't, it doesn't matter, but are the Uyghur dissidents safe? Do you know that they, has anything happened to them because these names have been passed along? Some of them gave testimony in my case that the Chinese government had sent agents, agents to their family homes. Um, one of the person's brother was arbitrarily arrested and hasn't been seen since. Um, one of the people, both of their parents, have died in the concentration camps. Most of the names that are handed over of a Uyghur dissident, dissidents that are based outside of China, that have fled China, but there, it's their family members in China. Miss Riley, how is not, this not criminal? I think it is. I believe it is criminal. Um, I have written to the Secretary General. I have pointed out that under international human rights law, this is criminal complicity in genocide. There are three things in human rights law that are, that are completely prohibited in all circumstances, genocide, slavery and torture. The Chinese treatment of the Uyghurs covers all three. 
And when I met the Secretary General in person in February, he admitted that he knows I'm telling the truth and said resolving my case would be, and I quote, difficult. Sorry, I'm just slightly shaken hearing what you're saying and I'm trying to compose myself. You've been punished for blowing this, <clears throat> blowing the lid off this. What happens next? What, what, what do you do? Have the media, anyone in the newspapers published these emails? Have you, have you sent them to journalists? What, what, do you, what are yeah. your next moves on this? Um, I'm going as public as I possibly can. As you know, it's really difficult to attract attention to this issue. Um, and I salute you for the work that you've done in that regard. Um, there have been a few newspaper stories. Um, the UN has tried to kill some others. I know that The Guardian wrote a big in investigative piece and it was killed by an editor. Um, I don't know why, <laughs> but I am desperately trying to draw attention because Every time I reported this, whether it was internally higher and higher up the chain of the UN, I expected that people would care. I expected that their reaction would be what your reaction has been. This is shocking. This is the opposite of why the UN exists.